Thinking out loud. I love to think out loud. And I was thinking out loud today and meditating on the good word and a vision appeared before me quickly. The vision was so quick, I was almost surprised by it. And I was caught up in a vision and I was watching Christ in the boat on the water. And he was asleep. And immediately there was a storm. Came up out of nowhere. And we all know that story. We've heard it a thousand times. And as I was watching the storm in the vision, I even said to myself in the vision or thinking it, I said, boy, that old devil, he had to bring up a storm to put fear in the disciples. So much fear that it caused them to wake him up or, Lord, wake up, lest we perish. Get up, Lord. And in the vision, I heard the Holy Spirit of God speaking to me. I never see him, not even in a vision. Even in a vision, I never, ever see him. But I'd give her anything to see him. I really would. But in the vision, the Holy Spirit of God is talking with me. And I love him, church. I love him with everything. Lord, don't let me cry. I love him with everything that is in me. And that's the truth. And he spoke to me and he said, Do you see the power of God, the manifestation of the power of God? And I said, Yeah, did you see that enemy bring up a storm? He said, How do you reckon that the storm was created by the enemy? I said, to put fear in the disciples, my Lord, to cause them to wake Christ up. And he had to rebuke them for, oh, ye a little faith. He said, my friend, are you aware of a negative and a positive together in one place? And I said, no, my Lord, I never really uh, meditated or thought about a negative and a positive together in one place. He says, can you imagine that the negative and the positive together in one place would cause some type of storm? I said, what? Because that's all I do say that to him when he's going to give me a revelation knowledge. I said, what? Here we go. Even in the vision. I'm noticing that I'm having more power in the visions because every time I go, I, I like to be more aware of everything. And I always say to the Lord, the next time I go, I'm going to be more aware. I'm going to pay more attention. I'm going to be more aware of everything. I'm going to look at everything while I'm there. Now, Jesus is in the boat, and his disciples had to wake him up. So do you think the storm, listen to me, church, this is exactly what the Holy Spirit of God said to me, and I'm going to tell you just like he said it to me, word for word. He said, did you think the enemy caused the storm? And I said, yes, my Lord, I did, to put fear in the people. He said, what if I tell you that the storm was caused by Jesus Christ himself? I said, why would he start a storm and stop it? Because he did bring calm to the storm. Why would he create a storm and then stop it? He says, can you imagine the power that is within this man? All the power of heaven is in him. I said, yes, my Lord, I'm very much aware of the power of God, the kind of power that that vessel had in him. He said, so can you imagine that a negative, this world, the elements of this world is a negative. And I said, yes, my Lord, I'm, I'm looking into this. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm right there with you. He said, and then you have a positive, which is Christ. And he's so powerful. He's full of power. 
and that power coming in contact and that positive coming in contact with that negative. I said, oh my goodness. <laughs> That's some stuff right there. That's some stuff right there. I'm telling you what. And then the vision ended. Soon as I said to the Holy Spirit, that's some stuff right there. The vision ended. And then I continued on talking with the Holy Spirit. And I said, boy, I tell you what, that is going to cause some kind of friction right there. In the atmosphere. To cause a storm. You have a negative and you have a positive. Oh, I can see the storm already. <laughs> Church, the Holy Spirit of God is amazing. Now, he going to take time out of his busy schedule. You know he's busy about the Father's business. Take me in a vision and break this down so simple that I can understand it. Because you know he got to break it down. He got to break it down. And that's exactly what he did. And then I saw the negative and the positive. Church, you ever been in a room with somebody? <laughs> Come on now, church. That is negative and you're a positive? Oh, it's going to stir up some dust. It's going to bring in a storm. Are you getting me now, church? Are you getting me now? I just love the Holy Spirit. How... He teaches. And I teach you the same way that I receive it. The same way he gives it to me, I know how to break it down to give it to you. And you thought I was some good teacher. Mm -hmm, I'm following the example. That's exactly what I do. I follow the example that the Holy Spirit, Lord, don't let me cry because you know Lord, don't let me cry. Just don't let me cry, Lord. He is my example. And he is my leader. And he is my teacher. And he is my guide. And I follow that example that he is. A lot of people, they follow preachers, teachers. Not me. I follow the Holy Spirit of God. Because he is my leader, he is my teacher, and he is my guide. And I follow his example. And I teach this good revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit of God as I received it from him. And I always say to the Holy Spirit when I'm in his presence, break it down, Lord. Let's break it down so I can understand. And you know God is so good, church. He'll break that word down for you just so you can understand it because he wants you to be able to eat that meat. Because if you can't eat it, it's not going to profit you anything. If you can't eat the butter and the honey on the bread, it's not going to profit you anything. And God wants this word to profit you. He wants you to be blessed by it, nourished by it. Back in the day, I used to have a preacher that I loved dearly, and I've talked about Brother Pulley before, and that was a great man of God. And I'll never forget the words that he said to me in 1987. I said, Brother Pulley, this church is blessed of God. You can feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the parking lot. The love of God is here. And I said, and I thank God that he led me to this house. He said, you've got to go where you're led and where you're fed. I said, amen, brother. You've got to go where you're led and where you're fed. And I thank God that by the power of the Holy Ghost, I can lead you and feed you. Because I followed the example of the Holy Spirit of God that leads me and feeds me every day. This amazing word that I love so much. Oh my goodness, you just don't know how much I love this word. You can't imagine. 
I don't think you're you're going to find anybody that loves this word more than me and Brother Preston. And I'm telling you, if I do, I, I certainly want to know where you live because I'm going to be over at your house every day because I love being in this word all, all day long. And I love thinking out loud and the Holy Spirit of God encourages me. Think out loud. Yes, my Lord. I'm thinking out loud. So you got to run it back, church. Sometimes thinking out loud is the greatest treasure of all. So I encourage you today to think out loud. Go beyond that box, church. Don't let anyone put God in a box for you and tell you that your God is in that box. I remember when the angel Gabriel said that to me. He showed me a box in a vision. And he said, what do you see? And I said, I see a box. He said, man's God is in that box. I said, my God is in that box. He says, no. I said, man's God is in that box. They have taken all that they believe that they know about God and they put him in a box. And they locked it up, sealed up the box. They are not willing to go beyond anything they know. He said, Donna, you must be willing to go beyond that box because your God is beyond that box. He's beyond anything that you know or can even imagine. There is no end to God. He said, are you willing? And I said to the angel Gabriel, yes, I'm willing. I, I do whatever it takes. I'm willing to go beyond that box. And I teach as I am led by the Holy Spirit. I don't know how else to teach because he teaches me and I tell you the same things that he says to me. He is my example that I follow every day. Last night I went to church with my daughter. It was good to be in the house of God, praising the Lord and the multitude of counselors. There is safety. I was thankful to be in the house of God uh, and had prayer. It was a blessing to go to the altar because you see, church, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. And then I went in there with my shoes on, and then I thought about what Brother Pulley used to tell us back in the day. Why are you wearing those shoes in the house of God? Lord, don't let me cry. Don't you know you're standing on holy ground? We are in the presence of God. In the house of God, we are standing in his presence. Standing on holy ground. I took my shoes off. Because I was standing on holy ground. I give, I give God the honor, the glory, the praise, the worship. So think on these things today, church, and I encourage you to think out loud. Boy, I tell you what, that was some good word right there, and he gave me a vision to edify that word. Who am I? I'm not no one, church. I'm not anybody that God should look down from heaven and give me his amazing words to give to you. But I'm certainly thankful for everything he blesses me with, that's for sure. I am thankful for everything. How a negative and a positive together can cause a storm. And you know the power that was in Jesus Christ. Just the power alone. Now that's something right there to think about, church. That's something to chew on right there, church. That's something to chew on. So take the time to eat this good word today. And don't eat it fast. Take the time to chew it. Take the time to digest it. Take the time to enjoy it. Because it's precious. And it's given by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And that makes it that much more rare. And that much more of a treasure.
God bless you today, my dear, dear, precious friends. In Jesus Christ's most holy name we pray. And let the church say, Amen and Amen. Know that I love you, my dear, precious friends. You are always on my heart and in my prayers. So think on these things today, and I encourage you to think out loud. Meditate on that word. Have a blessed and victorious day today, my dear precious friends. In Jesus Christ, isn't that a beautiful name? That's a name above all names is the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, in his most holy, holy, holy name that we pray and let the church say amen and amen. I love you, my friends. Keep me in your prayers and you remain in mine. Have a blessed day.